Okay, it is time to take a little bit of a deeper dive into iOS 26 that just got announced and all of the liquid glass design elements and substantial changes. One of the first things you're gonna see, and it kind of goes by quick, I wish it would last a little long on the screen, we do have battery intelligence in this build. Right when you tap and you have your phone plugged in, you can see right there it says 26 minutes to 80%. 63% charged, then it goes away. Finally, we have an estimated time to charge. 80% is just what the phone's set to. That's why it's only showing that amount of time left. But it is nice to see finally that iPhones have gotten a feature that Android devices have had for years. Now, beyond that, you can kind of see a different kind of design element as well. When your screen saver fades out on your lock screen, it shows the time and date more prevalently and just more dominantly displayed with everything else being more of a blurred background. And then if you actually go into it a little further, and launch and we go into the wallpaper selector and customizer you can see here when you actually go in the clocks have that glass look but if you want to customize it further you can choose to turn that off or not use it at all just depending on what you want to do so what i mean by that is let's go ahead and we'll pick the clock you can see at the bottom here you have glass and solid options here so if you don't want that transparent look you can turn it off and just click on solid and you have your regular assortment of colors like it's always been if you do want the glass look you are a little more limited into what colors you can select from and they are somewhat more difficult to view in the keynote they did show that you will be able to have a larger clock if you want to pull it down and have it match you can see on the top right side here there's this little toggle that you should be able to drag and really resize it as needed so you can see we can move that around now. I'm not sure if that's really a glitch or if that's actually how we're able to add some widgets at the end here, but let's just go ahead and pick a couple here. And you can see now those are at the bottom now instead of right under the clock. So pretty cool to see. And then if you want to blow up the clock, you can drag around as you would like to do right there. I like the larger look. Let's just go ahead and say done here now with a larger clock. So if we lo log our phone and lock it, you can see it is actually now expanded out quite a bit. And you can see the time a lot larger. When you unlock it, you can see it kind of got a little thicker. And then if you swipe all the way up, it changes yet again. So I definitely am a big fan of this design change. It looks really good. So aside from that, after obviously all of the changes with that liquid glass design, it is still hit and miss. It has to still grow on me. We didn't get those round icons that were rumored. There are definitely some other opportunities here, but again, this is only a first beta. So keep in mind, we could be seeing significant changes as we go. If you actually jumped into some of the actual stock apps, so let me go ahead and jump into messages. You can see right off the bat, you can now select backgrounds like we talked about prior, and you can actually change it as you need. What I'm going to do is if you click on the change on the contact photo now, you can actually go right into it and you can see suggested options, which have quite a few backgrounds, or you can pick some of the top ones here. You have your photos, links, documents, locations, wallet, all right here in a nice clean interface. And the keyboard now, again, looks a little different as well. Quite a unique look from what it did but before. You can see the buttons, including the keyboard, kind of do float, so to speak. I don't think it's the best look here, but I don't think it is terrible. Um, it does feel a little different to type on, though, I will say that. One thing that's not live here, like we said, that is Apple Intelligence in screenshots right now and all that, where you can see this is the new design screenshot look instead of just minimizing it on the bottom left-hand side. It does give you that option if that's how you would like to revert back to but this is the new look. You can see the rounded corners of where you can drag your screen shot that you'd like to have it at. We'll just reset that. All your markup tools are right there and you can see the slight changes every time you press something and how it really looks. It is a totally different design and it actually is pretty impressive, I, I gotta say. So aside from that, again, not being live yet, there are still a number of features that were talked about that are not live in here. First beta, and this does have an N build, if I'm not mistaken, let's go into iOS. So yeah, with this early of a build, there's going to be a lot of changes to come, some of which we've talked about, some of which we don't even know about. 
I'm surprised they left battery intelligence out of this. I think that's one of the big ones that were rumored for a while, and hopefully that will come soon. Aside from that, if you noticed also, you can see how differently outlined and layout the center is here for settings. I actually do like it. I think it looks a little cleaner. I also do like when you're in your settings, your search and everything else across iOS is now at the bottom. So it's a little easier to reach. Aside from that, there's talks about the new games app. That's not here yet. There's a lot of other changes in the camera app and you can see how simplified this looks now at the bottom. You have your sizes that you need for your magnification. You have your top two shooting options, which is video, photo, and it shows you up top now what the resolution and frames per second is. When you go to swipe on the bottom here, that is how you actually get to your other photo options that existed prior in other locations. So that's kind of where we're at with that. All the apps did get a good redesign and all that, but you guys let me know. What do you think about these new design language here, the new logos? It looks like red items on white backgrounds, so the YouTube Studio app doesn't look great. It honestly looks kind of blurred and distorted. Uh, I do like how the icon looks here for mail. Phone doesn't look that much different to me. Some of the first party apps, obviously you're gonna have the better quality icons right now, but it just looks incomplete. Uh, I'm not fully sold yet. But I will say for a first beta, after it took a while to update, because of it being a massive 15 gigabyte file size, it has been working shockingly pretty good. So we can jump around, you can see our normal test, everything is working as you would anticipate. So it's nice to see here, time will tell how battery life is and if it's worth updating for stability reasons yet. We know how bad iOS 18.5 was, we still don't have an 18.5.1 build, which is definitely weird also, but we'll keep doing a deeper dive and go into a ton of other options and see what we can find here. It's still not ideal lighting conditions since we're outside trying to shoot this for you guys. So just keep that in mind. You can see here we're having some issues with the app store even loading. Let me get off Wi-Fi. But yeah, you can see how everything kind of looks at the bottom and you can see those animations. They look really, really cool. Also, beyond all this, there's a lot to come. We have about five months left until this actually gets announced officially and released. So expect changes. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'm only one person. Are you a fan of iOS 26? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.